This week, we're exploring the ever-changing world of artisan cheese. From the special attention cheesemakers give their award-winning handcrafted cheeses to the many Wisconsin originals available today. Rev up your taste buds. It's going to be a tasty half hour. Hello and welcome to Discover Wisconsin. This episode of Discover Wisconsin, America's Dairyland, is brought to you by the Dairy Farm Families of Wisconsin. The Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board. America's Dairyland is your land. Wisconsin has an abundance of wonderful assets. At the top of that list is Wisconsin cheese. I'm proud to say my family has ties to Wisconsin cheese making. My great grandfather emigrated from Switzerland to become a cheesemaker right here in Wisconsin. So I got thinking about cheese, its origins, and how it was first made. If you research the origins of cheese, you might find that it's an ancient food with no clear foundation. Recent research dates its beginnings at least 7,000 years ago. Strange clay vessels with small holes were unearthed in Northern Europe and found to have residue that matched the chemical signature of cow's milk. This simple ancient cheese was an important step in the development of modern civilization. Today, cheese is made with essentially the same ingredients, milk, enzymes and salt. Although more modern methods have been introduced, but you know what they say, the more things change, the more they stay the same. More than a century ago, when cheese was first crafted in the United States, it was made in small batches on family farms. In fact, Wisconsin farm wives began making cheese in the 1830s. Today, artisanal cheese is made using the same basic steps as all cheese but the distinction lies in the techniques. Artisan cheeses are often handmade in small batches. It's like an extension of farming, really. So, and that's why when it's done on the sort of smaller scale, it allows it to be truly artisanal. Some artisan cheeses are more complex in taste. These flavors can be developed through longer aging, special rubs, or washing with a particular ripening agent that helps develop flavor. But not all artisan cheeses made in Wisconsin are aged. Some are fresh and milky in flavor. It's keeping it local and keeping sort of tight controls on, on the milk and the milk quality, um, but it's not actually made on the farm, which distinguishes it from sort of farmhouse or farmstead. But what truly may define artisan cheese are the men and women who fashion liquid milk into well-made cheese someone like Wisconsin master cheesemaker, Sid Cook. When the milk first runs into the vat, no one else is in the plant but you. That was always a very, um, very special um, and wonderful, wonderful time for me. Sid Cook can arguably be called the godfather of American cheese originals. He spent decades crafting distinctive, award-winning cheeses. It's really very exciting to, uh, you know, to come up with something that um, just is not in the market and, and uh, no one else has done it before. A fourth generation cheesemaker, Sid decided to start experimenting with different cultures and milk varieties in order to diversify his business and meet customer demand. I was very interested in, in uh, doing some other cheeses besides Cheddar, Colby, Monterey Jack and Munster. And so it was, it was sort of a natural for me to, to start. Although Sid enjoys the process of making cheese, he says that the true magic comes about as the cheese transforms itself during the aging process called affinage. You know, how you age your blue cheeses, how you age your cheddars, these are all, um, all very, very important things with uh, curing and, and affinage. And so yeah, the word affinage is a very important word because it's probably the only word uh, that covers all of those things. To say the least, 
affinage is just one part of the process of making great tasting artisan cheese, but that's only scratching the surface, so to speak. Are you starting to crave Wisconsin artisan cheese? Then head to discoverwisconsin.com and choose America's Dairyland to find out where you can buy some. So what is it about Wisconsin that makes it the perfect place to create new cheeses? Well, stay tuned because we're going to find out next. We're back to savor the essence of artisan cheese in America's Dairyland. The more I research, the more I'm discovering that Wisconsin truly is the perfect place to make cheese. Our climate, topography, ask any cheese maker and they'll tell you, all Wisconsin cheeses start with great milk. Master cheese maker Mike Matichewski of Sartori Foods in Anago can attest to the fact that Wisconsin milk is what makes artisan cheese so spectacular. We have probably the best climate for raising dairy cows. It's temperate, not too cold, not too hot. We have an abundance of feed and most importantly, really good water. For the past few years, Mike has concentrated his efforts on bringing out the nuances in the milk and making truly flavorful cheeses that have become signature products for Sartori. Obviously, our, our Sarvecchio Parmesan is, you know, our flagship. It is, to me, one of the greatest cheeses on the planet. Extremely proud of that one. You know, it's won so many stinking awards. But even if it didn't, it's still the greatest cheese in the world to me. You know, it's like eating candy. And although Sartori's Parmesan has made a name for itself, so has another one of their cheeses. It is a magical cheese. It's got some very unique starter cultures in it, a very unique process. And um, with all of those things brought together, it, it just is this wonderful thing that you can do so many different combinations with. The name Bella Vitano was one of many names that were thrown about, and it's a play on beautiful life. And isn't it? <laughs> when it comes to artisan cheese, distinctive flavor profiles set them apart, and their unique tastes inspire chefs to create magic in the kitchen as well. Our adventure today brings us to Milwaukee and Rumpus Room. Chef Adam Siegel joins us today. What is it about artisan cheese that inspires you? Everything inspires me about it. It's just great to eat, and it's also one of the most versatile. You can eat it as it is, which is my favorite way, but then you can do so many different things through cooking with it. You could turn it into a soup, you can add it into a salad, or you can add it into a meat or, or vegetables, and there's just so much that you can do to it, it's endless. As executive chef, are you able to meet a lot of the different cheesemakers from around the state? Sure, you know, uh, one of the ones that I actually have a pretty decent relationship with is Andy Hatch. His parents live not too far from this building, and uh, so we got to meet him through that. And it's fun just getting to hear their stories. You know, I met Joe Widmer and hearing his story, how he grew up in that building and still making cheese the way that he, that, that he was taught to from an early age is, is incredible. And he's the only one who makes cheese, true brick cheese, the, that way. It's fair to say most chefs enjoy meeting the farmers and cheesemakers who produce products that they use in their kitchens. And many chefs shop their local farmer's market to get artisan cheese straight from the cheesemakers who craft it. Uh, the way to use it is to bake with it. A few cheesemakers, including Tony and Julie Hook and Willie Lehner, can be found every Saturday at the Dane County Farmer's Market. It's here where they can talk to their customers and local chefs, too. I know the farmer that produced the milk. I make the cheese. And then being able to bring it directly to the, the market where uh, I, I can turn my customers onto it. And I can tell they really appreciate it. Seeing that appreciation firsthand also gives these cheesemakers a sense of satisfaction that what they're producing is what the consumers want. That gives me uh, food for my soul. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this for 30 years. Probably. <laughs> I would have probably burnt out a long time ago. But, uh, you know, people have, you look around, people have smiles on their faces. So the next time you crave some great Wisconsin cheese or want to meet the person who makes it, you may only need to go as far as your local farmer's market. Check out some of the other great places to buy artisan cheese and discover new recipes by logging on to discoverwisconsin.com and choosing destination, America's Dairyland. Oh, we're not done yet. Up next, we're going to uncover the evolution of artisan cheese. 
We're glad you came back to savor the essence of artisan cheese. Remember that old saying, you have to know the rules before you can break them? Well, the same goes for cheese making. You have to master the basics before you can start to create new recipes. Next, we'll talk with two cheesemakers who have generations of experience to back them up. Let's start with Wisconsin master cheesemaker, Joe Widmer. For decades, Joe has been handcrafting authentic brick and Colby cheese, practicing traditions passed down from his father and grandfather. Still using the bricks my grandfather used. A lot of people say it's like making cheese like the Flintstones. But we stuck to the same recipes and uh, basically the same tr traditional methods, uh, which makes it an artist in cheese. For cheesemakers like Joe, sticking to traditional methods and handcrafting their cheese has its own benefits. Consistency is very important, and if you get the same quality out of a product every time, you're going to get repeat customers. But for Widmer, that tradition of cheese making goes a bit further than just consistently making a great piece of cheese. You got to remember, I was raised above a cheese factory, and if you came out the kitchen door and walked down the steps, you could see the rats. So yeah, it's, it's in your blood, you're raised with it. Joe's grandfather created brick cheese in 1905, and it was one of the first original artisan cheeses created in Wisconsin. Although it was well-liked a century ago, the renewed demand for stronger flavored cheeses is making it popular once again. For a while, uh, the milder cheeses were moving uh, from our place here, but now people are turning back to the traditional uh, uh, stronger cheeses. When it comes to bolder flavors, cheesemaker Chris Raleigh knows all about it. I'm a fourth generation cheesemaker, so I, I grew up around cheese. Uh, when I was younger, you know, we'd come in and I'd hang around with my dad and help him. It soaks in. Chris grew up making traditional cheddar. When commodity cheese making gained momentum in the 1980s, the Raleigh struggled to keep pace and decided to close shop. But their cheese making heritage was strong and Chris persuaded his father to reopen the plant to specialize in artisan cheese. When my dad was a cheesemaker at my age, a younger man, he was basically required to make a cheddar, a Colby, or whatever it may be that they were making. I am able to uh, experiment with cheese recipes. Chris started experimenting with a blue mold infused cheddar, naming it after a town just down the road and then magic happened. But I've had more people tell me that my Dunbarton cheese is their favorite cheese ever. Uh, we've been pretty fortunate for the most part. Uh, a lot of the things that we have tried have worked and uh, we're able to develop new types of products all the time. Although proud of his Dunbarton blue, Raleigh isn't content to rest on his laurels. He's always working on something new. I'm not wanting to have just an average ordinary piece of cheese. That's not what I try to do. I want the very best that I can put out there for people. And people are responding favorably. In fact, demand is so high that he's had to expand. Six years ago, I would never have dreamed that we'd be where we are right now with it. Do you remember all of the cheesemakers we've introduced you to today? Learn more about them by logging on to discoverwisconsin.com and choosing Destination America's Dairyland. Don't head to the fridge just yet, because coming up, we're taking a look into the future, and I'm pretty sure you're going to like what you see. We're back in America's Dairyland, savoring the essence of Wisconsin artisan cheese. One type of artisanal cheese is farmstead cheese which is made with milk from the producer's own herd of cows. Two of Wisconsin's best known and highly awarded farmstead cheeses come from Uplands Cheese and are made by cheesemaker Andy Hatch, who crafts Pleasant Ridge Reserve and Rush Creek Reserve, the only two cheeses Uplands makes. Although Wisconsin is known for generational cheesemakers who are born into the craft, there are many new cheesemakers mastering the techniques like Andy Hatch. What we do here, uh, we just make cheese from the milk of our own cows and just make one cheese uh, during each season and don't make cheese in the winter. Although it sounds unbelievable, 
Andy didn't intend to be a cheesemaker. He was interested in farming and he was doing research for a corn breeder when an unanticipated event turned him toward cheesemaking. Right about the time I was ready to quit working for the corn breeder, his elderly father-in-law in Norway died. So they sent me over to Norway and I learned to make cheese uh, from a little old lady named Uni on the side of a fjord. When Andy returned to the States, he began apprenticing with several cheesemakers. As luck would have it, he ended up at Uplands Cheese working with Mike Gingrich, creator of Pleasant Ridge Reserve. When Mike and Carol retired, Andy took over the Uplands operation and continues to make Pleasant Ridge Reserve Uplands flagship cheese. He also created a seasonal specialty, Rush Creek Reserve. This is an approach to cheese making that's, that's common in the Alps and has a long history there, but, but is unusual here. And so there were a lot of, the neighbors raised a lot of eyebrows early on. It may have raised neighbors' eyebrows, but for people who buy Pleasant Ridge Reserve and Rush Creek Reserve, there's a definite appreciation for well-made, handcrafted cheeses. Um, well, yeah, when we see somebody uh, get excited about a cheese, there's a quiet satisfaction always in that. Um, and it, uh, it's a lot of hard work, and so it, uh, it validates that. It's that sort of validation that earned Pleasant Ridge Reserve Best of Show three times at the American Cheese Society Awards. It's an extremely popular cheese, and it can be found in many cheese shops and specialty stores throughout the state and country. We're here today downtown Madison at Fromagination with Ken Monteleone, and what a beautiful shop you have here. First of all, let's talk about the different artisan cheeses and why you decided to bring those into your shop. Well, thank you. Uh, I love Wisconsin. I've lived here for over 20 years, and I decided to leave the corporate world and follow my passion. And that was uh, really supporting and promoting local artisans throughout the state. So I thought cheese was a natural. For so long, Wisconsin was known for cheddar and Colby. When did that shift take place? And now these artisan cheeses are really coming into play. Yeah, I think what's going on in our state, obviously, yes, we have a rich tradition of cheese making dating over 100 years. And what I've, what I've witnessed the last 20 years in, in Wisconsin is a cheese renaissance. So I see this renaissance continuing for generations to come. At Fromagination, as well as many cheese shops throughout the state, they love to get cheese into the mouths of consumers. I have to get a little bit of uh, yeah. the Dunbarton. Blue. Yeah. That's just, wow. I'm thinking like a, a quarter pound. In fact, the folks at this cheese shop are disappointed if you leave without tasting some of the many artisan cheeses they sell. As we've seen today, there's no shortage of artisan cheeses throughout Wisconsin. Just head to your local cheese shop and see what varieties they offer. We're sure you won't be disappointed. We hope you've enjoyed this exploration of Wisconsin artisan cheeses. I know this was a perfect assignment for me. I just can't get enough of discovering Wisconsin. This episode of Discover Wisconsin, America's Dairyland, is brought to you by the Dairy Farm Families of Wisconsin, the Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board. America's Dairyland is your land. For more information and bonus videos from this episode, just go to discoverwisconsin.com. While you're there, click on our Kadiddle link to watch entire episodes from this season or past seasons. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Discover Wisconsin Radio all across the state. Do I have the best job in the world? I'd like to think not, but I'm pretty happy.